All right, we are looking at proving ground number four. This will start your final project. But this will also finish up your creative problem solving skills. Uh, proving ground projects. So this will be the last one. This is all meant to generate the best possible original idea in support of your final concept assignment, assignment number eight. You are asked to use the steps outlined and demonstrated below. So we start it with defining a problem, then brainstorming, collecting info, creating it, presenting it, and that yields the final product, right? So this is how we'll approach it. We're going to generate a clear statement summary, basically a one-sentence description of your idea. Then we are going to create at least three rough thumbnail sketches that are visual solutions for that single idea. We don't want to create three sketches for three totally different ideas. Then we want to participate in an individual process critique. You're going to do that with me, your instructor. And then create a post and post a refined sketch. And you're going to settle on a working title for your work because title is important for concept work. It's like another color of your artwork before figuring out exactly what kind of digital steps you're going to use to create your final project. And then you're also going to write your final artist statement, which will be no more than a page, but should have your name, the title of your artwork, and then whatever you want the audience to know about your artwork, which can include, you know, the programs you used, the idea you had, that kind of thing. So this is what I call the concept project workflow. The very first step, it's, it's like so foundational, it's not even a numbered step, it's number zero. This is what you need to do is to define your problem, right? In the design world and in the professional commercial art world, this is often called a brief. So when you hear artists talk about their brief for the project, I like to think of it as like a briefcase with all the instructions in it. That's what a client has told them they need to do, right? Or that's the assignment they've given themselves to do. It's like the assignment sheet. So you get to define your own brief for this. You're going to do that by writing a one-sentence statement summary. And I give you a link for that in case that's helpful. This is how to create a one-sentence synopsis, you know, for anything you want to do. So here's an example. And this is from a past student, right? So their theme was not apathy is the enemy. Their theme was something about relating to the uh, public health crisis we were in at the time. But, but you can see how if they wanted to do this idea, it could fit under the theme of apathy is the enemy. But their idea ri written out before they did anything else was this. I will use the familiar imagery of memes and cancel culture to satirize our society's need to politicize every bleeping thing, no matter how obvious or important. So what I like about this statement summary is that it shows a clear point of view. This is not something that everyone in the audience needs to agree with, but when you have a clear point of view in your idea, that's something that anyone in an audience can appreciate, right? We don't look at, at works of art generally just to have our own opinions repeated to us. We look to see other people's experiences, other people's opinions, other people's points of view. So don't be afraid to put your own ideas, your own points of view into your statement summary right from the beginning. So one way to poke fun at things is to satirize something, right? But you don't always have to be comical about it. Another way of saying this idea that's not in a, in a comical way is to use memes, familiar imagery of memes and cancel culture to to, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? To denigrate, or to make fun of, or to uh, make people look stupid, or something like that, right? Like, you can, even in just that one sentence, you can kind of say what the tone is you want for the artwork, right? So he wanted a more playful tone. 
that's even kind of clear in how he capitalized certain things. So then the next step, step one, is brainstorming. Brainstorming starts by not being creative. Brainstorming starts by what I call acknowledging the cliches. So you could search for cancel culture memes if this was your idea, right? And there are no there are no shortage, right? And these are the things that have already been done. And some of them are better than others. Some of them might work towards what you're thinking of. Some might not. But the ones he came up with at the time were the Karens, butterfly memes, COVID denier memes, anti-masker memes, misinformation memes, 5G memes, all that kind of stuff, right? The next step of brainstorming is to actually come up with thumbnail sketches, at least three of them, that all solve your sentence summary in a different way. So the first approach that they did, they were also an art history student. At the same time, they were a digital art student of mine. So this first solution uses a, an art history painting, Eugene Delacroix's Liberty Leading the People. But instead, it's called Karen Leading the Way. And you have you have a, a Karen character with a sign that says no mass stepping over dead bodies, right? <laughs> so this is the actual painting. You might be familiar with it, right? So they were combining kind of Karen memes with this historical painting, which was after the French Revolution in 1830, the July Revolution. And they would have like the dead bodies, and then she would have a, a sign that says no masks, that kind of thing. So that was one idea. Realize that's a pretty robust idea. The sketch does not need to be very clean or clear, right? Because it's just one approach to this. Another was the I can has a cheeseburger meme, but instead it's a cat with a mask, and I can has COVID if I want, and the mask is shredded. Do you guys know the I can has cheeseburger? You know, because this student was obviously pretty interested in memes. So these are like all these cat memes, and this has been around forever. All right. And then the last one was something I didn't know about, but it was a more recent meme at this time. It was called the butterfly meme. Yep, so here it is. It kind of uses an anime still. That kind of thing. It's a little bit complicated. But um, but they wanted to do a parody of it where the person would be in a mega hat and they're seeing a floating face mask and asking, is this socialism while holding a book titled Common Sense, which is a Thomas Paine reference. So there's a lot of different references going on. You come to class with those three sketches and with your, your sentence, and I will help you come to the next step, which is to create, looking at your different references, we decided to go with this idea, but to sharpen it up and to bring in good things from the other ideas. So we use the butterfly meme, but then we use the Karen as an example, instead of the person with the mega hat. This is the input I gave him that he liked. And then we just made it a little less wordy. You know, you didn't have to have a lot of different things. You just had that floating face mask and the question, is this oppressing me? And then the book they have is Google, like just web searches, right? And now, once we go over that, we talk about like what techniques will they use? They decide to use digital inking and coloring to create a raster illustration. It's like a, a spot illustration with a background. And then this was their final artwork, right? So then they had to print it, and then they had to write their one-page artist statement, and this is what they wrote. They gave their name, they gave the title of the work, they called it Karen versus the Masks of Tyranny, and they, they give a little summary of what they were trying to do. And then those were posted up, and then students critiqued it, right? So that's the process. Just like this is my example of the process. You can do any idea you want, but the, sh the show will be apathy's the enemy.
So that's a place where you start, and your work will fit under that theme. All right.